Welcome back. This is lesson seven of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session nine. And in this lesson, we will take the Lambda function we created in the previous lesson and we'll expose it as a web service. For that, we will use API Gateway. This is a service from AWS that lets us expose different AWS services as web services, including Lambda functions. So let's check it. This is our Lambda function that we created previously. Now I will go to API Gateway. And so I have only one gateway. This is something I use for this join.datadocs.club. Let's create a new one for the Lambda function we just created. And here we need to select REST API. So here, yeah, new API, API name, let's say, yeah, cloth is classification. And now click on create API. Now what we need to do, it's a REST API, so we need to create a resource. Usually in REST world, the resources are nouns, like I don't know, users, items, and so on. But here we will call it with a verb predict. A few sessions ago when we were talking about Flask and deploying models, we usually had an endpoint that was called slash predict. We want to follow the same convention. That's why our resource will be a verb. It will be some URL slash predict. We don't need to enable anything else here. So we don't want to create it as a proxy resource. You can check what it is, but we don't need it here. Of course, we also don't need to just click on create resource. Now for this resource, we want to create a method. This is how exactly we want to invoke this uh, endpoint. So here we want to use post. Our request will be post. So remember this link. So this is our so-called payload. This is what we're going to send to the service. And this is something we sent with a post request. So we create a post method. Here we select lambda function so lambda lives in this eu west region and then the name is clothing classification we don't need to use proxy integration and default timeout okay so now let's click on save yes so now it says that it needs to modify the permissions that we have for the lambda function to let api gateway invoke it we just say okay give it now we have it this is our resource and this is how it looks like i don't think it's super interesting but what is interesting is this test link so let's click on this and we don't need to write anything here but we need to put the request we have here for us it's json url take the url from here that's our request let's run it so we see that it took four seconds and this is the body of the response. Again, we have the same response as previously. There is some information that is not interesting. Let's test it one more time. Yeah, so now it's faster. Yeah, it works. We were able to test it. Now what we need to do is now we want to take this API gateway and deploy it. And by deploying here, we just mean that we want to expose it. Let's create a new stage. I'll call it test and then click deploy and what happens now is that we have a url that we can use for testing our api gateway let me take that and i will go to our script for testing i'll comment that then i'll write url which is this one and then slash predict this is the url we got from api gateway and slash predict this is the method we created there which will in turn invoke the lambda function when we send a post request to this url let me execute that so i will now run this test now it goes to api gateway it invokes the lambda function and then returns the response from the lambda function to the api gateway and the api gateway returns us the response and this is how we turn our lambda function into a web service i need to add to that that right now this lambda function is open you had access to this url right now you would be able to send something to this url as well and this is not ideal so you don't want to do this at work. You don't want to open your services to everyone in the world. You need to be a little bit more careful with how you do this. And this is outside of the scope for this course, but this is something you need to keep in mind. So for experiments, for learning, it's fine, but please don't do this at work and talk to people who know AWS and who can help you configure it in such a way that it's limited only to those who actually need to invoke this function. That's actually it for this lesson and also for this session. We will just summarize in the next video what we learned in this session. And that's it. So see you soon.